In this video I want to show how I made this homemade Pirani vacuum gauge. With that you can measure vacuum relatively accurately and I was even able to see how the pressure is increasing if a too small of a hose is connected to the vacuum gauge and the restriction is too high. The vacuum gauge itself is pretty simple. We just have a glass body and in there we have a filament supported with some more thicker wire. A Pirani gauge works by heating this filament by letting a current flow through there and depending on the pressure the heat conduction from the filament to the gas that's in here will be different and the wire has a resistance and this resistance is dependent on the temperature and the filament will be hotter if there's less air to conduct or less gas to conduct the heat away from the filament and therefore its resistance will change and that's what we can measure and that's relatable to the vacuum inside this glass body. This is the whole thing without the glass body and this is a stainless steel wire. It's 56 centimeters long and 0.1 millimeters in diameter and this is supposed to have 24.6 ohms, the whole thing itself. The filament is coiled up and then uh, supported here with the thicker stainless steel wire and I have here the contacts melted into this glass. This is not that easy so it's probably simpler to use stainless steel uh, tubing and stuff like that and just glue it in isolating with epoxy. That's probably easier because I melted the glass and stuff like that and melted the uh, tungsten in here and it's vacuum tight. That's not that easy. Also I had this glass body and melted two pieces here together to have a T piece. Um, one connected to the vacuum pump and then the other connected to whatever you want to connect to it. And I didn't get the um, stresses out of the glass. Uh, in this area very well so it might implode or something like that if it's connected to the vacuum pump the glass is pretty damn thick but uh, it's still a bit well not great if it's not completely annealed and there's still stress in the glass so it's probably better to have uh, this constructed out of uh, tubing some stainless steel tubing or something like that I also made it out of this laboratory glassware because it has these ground glass joints and that's a 1926 ground glass joint and I found out that you can connect these to these KF16 vacuum uh, connectors and what you just have to do is grind a little bit of here uh, of this lip it works without but then the, the this clamp is not uh, closing all the way or you have to um, make this, this screw longer to make it close so I removed a bit of this lip but then it's uh, perfectly fitting on this KF16 vacuum connector. <laughs> now to the electronics I talked about heating this filament and also measuring its resistance. And that's done by this circuit, that's a Wheatstone bridge. And the plans for the whole thing is in from a website and I'm going to link this in the description as well. But yeah, that's a Wheatstone bridge and we have two 100 ohm resistors. Then up here's the filament with its 24.6 ohms. Then a 25 ohm resistor, one watt. And a potentiometer, that's this thing. Uh, that's also one watt, at least one watt. I think this one is two watts or three watts. And yeah, the whole thing gets supplied by 12 volts. And 
then we measure the voltage at these two points and the website tells you to adjust the voltage to 0 0.660 volts and it has a table where it relates the vacuum level to the voltage. How accurate this is, I don't know, um, because obviously we don't exactly have 24.6 volts if we build this. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. We only can measure the voltage. We would need uh, yeah, to calibrate this ourselves to know exactly uh, if a certain voltage is a certain level of vacuum. That's one problem of this. But what you can in theory do is doing leak detection with this because the gas in here or the uh, filament in here is dependent on the heat conduction of the gas inside. And two gases have a higher um, heat conduction or thermal conductivity than air or nitrogen or whatever. And that's hydrogen and helium. And I tried it out. I poked a little hole on in a piece of plastic and put some hydrogen in and you can see the gauge is rising. I don't think that's super sensitive so I don't know how practical this is but it's pretty interesting. Also in the beginning I was a bit afraid to connect this thing to my vacuum pump directly because the implosion risk and I connected it with a pretty thin pretty small hose and the pressure was pretty high and compared to the pressure if it's connected to the vacuum pump directly it's uh, much higher and that's to, due to the restriction of this hose that's way too thin for these vacuum levels. I'm pretty sure the difference in pressure with a hose and without the hose is not noticeable by a vacuum gauge like this and this thing is certainly more accurate just from the fact that you can read it off with a multimeter as a voltage but also um, yeah this is pretty inaccurate so I may build this permanently uh, with stainless steel tubing I'm not sure yet but this thing is pretty good just from building it at home and maybe I can someday get this more or less calibrated uh, and have like an actual vacuum level readout with this. But it's pretty cool that you can build something like this yourself which is usually much more expensive and even the self-made version is potentially more accurate than these normal gauges you can get.